Hi, thanks for joining me. This is Dwell on Truth. So the verse I want to focus on today for our devotional study is Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That's Acts 1.8 which I believe is a key verse for the whole book. It begins with verse 1 that uh, Luke is writing, saying that his first book was about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he was taken up into heaven. And so therefore Acts, he's writing after that point what Jesus is continuing to do from heaven, sending his Holy Spirit. This verse in one eight says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, Earlier in verse 5, he talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You, sh you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then when it actually happens, in chapter 2 we read in verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. So Peter would be able to preach the gospel to them, which is what you see happen. And 3,000 people believe and are added to the church. And Peter stands up as a bold witness, a changed man empowered by the Holy Spirit, who just, he was afraid to say that he even knew Jesus. He cursed, I don't even know the man, I swear. And he denied him three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He thought that he would be able to stand with Jesus even if everyone else fled. He, he said, I would die for you, Lord. And Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times tonight. This Peter is different. He stands up in front of thousands of people and he has to speak loudly for them to hear them, mind you. He motions and says, listen to me. So it's through the word of God, through the proclamation, the declaration of the gospel that the church is established. And that's only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. But how does this apply to us? God can use us to the extent that we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we're confident our trust is in Him. Where's your confidence? Is it in yourself, like Peter, who was so sure of his devotion to Christ that he would be willing to die for Him? Was that in his own strength? Well, we recognize our weakness when we fail. God lets us fail sometimes to show us how much we need Him. This promise, however, is the assurance and gives us confidence that God can and will use us when we wait on Him for His Holy Spirit to fill us before we go, then we will be empowered when we go. That's the cause and effect of the Spirit-filled life. God is working through people, and this is the way He's chosen to do it. He, Jesus said, it's better for you that I ascend to the Father or otherwise the Spirit wouldn't come. God's plan all along was to send Jesus to do a three and a half year ministry, die for our sins, accomplish the, the price, pay the price for our redemption, rise from the dead, and have this be the central message, the basis for our saving faith. Having saving faith, however, is not enough. We need the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, the empowerment, baptism of the Holy Spirit, this filling, this coming upon experience. Just like you're baptized into water, well, the Holy Spirit is what we're baptized into, the sus substance being immersed and covered with and, and soaking in the Holy Spirit. He'll have an impact in our life. And if your life is the same now as it's always been, maybe you have not yet been baptized with the Holy Spirit. You say, I'm a believer. Doesn't the Holy Spirit live in me? Well, if you truly believe, and trust in Jesus for your salvation. You've repented of your sins, means you change your mind about sin and about God. You're leaving sin and pursuing God, coming to Him. Yes, the Holy Spirit is given to you as a deposit. He lives within you, but there's the second blessing, you can call it, of this filling with the Spirit. The disciples received the indwelling Holy Spirit in John chapter 20, I believe, when Jesus blew on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. But then it was not until after he ascended to heaven that he poured out the Holy Spirit upon them and made them witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's what we need so that we can be effective, powerful, speak authoritatively from the scriptures and have an effect 
on other people's lives. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And this is how he does it. So the book of Acts, it's about what Jesus is continuing to do in building his church by the Holy Spirit working through the apostles and the early Christians. In fact, we see the apostles mainly working in Jerusalem, chapters one through seven, and God chooses some of the young men to be witnesses there in Jerusalem. Stephen, the first martyr, Philip goes to Samaria, which is the third location Jesus mentions, and that's in chapter eight. And then from chapter nine through the end of the book, we see the gospel and the, the witnesses of Jesus go to the ends of the known world both Jew and Gentile, barbarian, Scythians, slave and free. This good news is for everybody. And what makes it good, what makes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus good is that that's what brings us life. When we call upon the Lord, all who call upon him shall be saved if we call upon him in truth. Main focus for this verse, Acts 1-8, is the benefit of being filled with the Holy Spirit and having them in our lives. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit today? When was the last time you asked God, please fill me with your Holy Spirit? Uh, Are you aware of the limitations of your flesh, the weakness of your flesh, the sinfulness of your flesh, and the need, the great need, you can call it an emergency. Disasters happen when we're not filled with the Holy Spirit. We operate our lives by the flesh, but miracles happen, lives are changed, and the church is built up new people are saved when you're filled with his holy spirit because he empowers you gives you boldness to preach and effectiveness to live out your christian faith we don't want to continue to say i think i can do it after we fail we should learn our lesson god i need you to do this through me and so i'll close with that uh paul said the life i now live I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And so let that be our devotional for today. Acts 1.8. So God bless you and receive the power of the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can be a witness where you are, your Jerusalem, and anywhere else the Lord will lead you and call you and send you.